Welcome back to another battle, everybody. I am Seaman. I'm a Grandmaster level Risk Global Domination player, and today we are playing Progressive Capitals on the lovely Earth 2209 AD map. Loyal viewer of the channel Gavin Schickel uh, recently commented that he would like to see me play this map because he's been having trouble finding players to play it with him uh, when he creates a game, and... I think that's very unfortunate. I think you should... Uh, I, I think people should play this map. If you guys follow the Tier List Tuesday series, this map is one of the two maps currently within the S tier on our list of maps. And we are playing as a green player out of the fourth position. Now, I go before purple, so... That does give me some leeway here. We got blue on a five here. I could cap next to blue. A little dangerous. Um, I don't love anything really in North and South America. I don't love the blizzards there. But the blizzards over in this area are very interesting to me. Because Asia is a split bonus. But more importantly, Australia is a two-point hold. And that two-point hold extends all the way out to this potential capping spot here on Tanzania. Now, purple goes after me. They might not love me capping here. But I think this is a decent spot. Now, if I was blue... I think I like Blue's cap on this 3 better than where they ended up on the 5 down here. I think the Libya capital would have been slightly better than the Nigeria capital. But I like Tanzania. It's possible Blue steps through and rolls me out. But we're going to hope that Purple caps elsewhere. Even if Purple does cap right next to me, I've got a great play for a 2-point hold over Australia. Purple goes down in South America. So they do avoid me there. We just got to make sure we have a decently strong capital. We should start with... At least, well, we will start with at least six troops, hopefully a bit more than that, and hopefully blue doesn't get uh, get aggressive and come try to take my cap. Pink looks like they're potentially playing for the Middle East, and they tried to roll something there. They lost their uh, entire stack. That was a five stack, lost the four. Obviously, the attacking ter or the original territory stays there. And we are joined by the cat, the myth, the legend. It's Fergus. Back at it again with the white fur and the black fur. He's dual-toned. Um, Fergus is here, looking as peppy as ever. Uh, red is, or yellow is rolling down some of Red's material in there. And trying to get started, maybe also playing for the Middle East. So this is a, an interesting start to this one. We've got the two-point hold over, over Australia again from... Uh, the North Island of New Zealand. Hopefully that works out in our favor. And I can kind of gain some information from the types of opponents that we have available to us. But part of the reason I wanted to pick this Tanzania cap is this is a five-point bonus here. And not just that, but or a five-territory bonus. Uh, but it's also a five-territory plus six. So if I can take this, yeah, we lock our capital off. But there's a potential we get double bonus here pretty early in this game. We just got to be a little bit careful. Blue doesn't put any troops on their capital here. Oh, Blue is doing the age-old mistake that people do on this map all the time, which is take bonuses absolutely nowhere near your capital. Uh, I tried a recording attempt uh, before this one. I came in second place. It was a two-hour and 15-minute game, and I didn't want to upload it. I didn't want to subject you guys to the amount of tomfoolery that occurred in that game. It might see the light of day on the channel at some point. But that, uh, that day is not going to be today, unfortunately. But we might bring it out in the future. It'll enter the backlog for sure. And I'll probably uh, I'll rename the recording to make sure that it's like something I, I can consider revisiting. Uh, Blue's got a, got a little bit of a weak capital here. I am worried that they might have a bonus. So here's my goal. I place here i'm not going to worry about pink or red because red's not going to have a bonus by the time he comes back around we're going to go four here how much i could get this back to cap let's go at least two uh i think i'm comfortable with a seven cap i might actually be able to take all of this um a seven cap yeah, let's see what we can do here. Because this, this three will come in. Let's see if I can go down. With a three, a little bit greedy here. 
Oh yeah, look at that guys. We managed to take a turn one Australia with a little bit of interesting pathing there and I think it worked out in my favor. I left two little residual twos here, but I think that's okay because I did get this back as a seven cap, which is what I wanted. Red's going to go for mainland Europe for the plus seven and probably take that. They start with, uh, with seven troops. It's possible they don't have Iberia, but they certainly churned through material and they don't actually defend their bonus from much. So uh, purple is going to start with nine troops. That's why I, I didn't want this to be any less than a seven in case the purple player gets a little aggressive with me. But if they go heavy for South America, I might even have a play to break them up. They're going to take in the pocket, leave three behind. One, two, three, four, five, six, six attacks there from purple and down to the point where it got to two dice at the end. I don't think purple has a very well defended capital right now. I'm going to be honest. So it hit me. It would have been a 10 stack off of cap or, or 10 stack on cap. So 10, nine, eight, seven, six. That's the number of texts at most on cap. There's five troops, but I have a feeling he hit extra material. Uh, because you know, everybody starts with varying sizes. And because of that, I think I can take Purple's cap here. We risk getting broken. We do risk getting broken. But I think aggressive on this map is the way to go. The players who are most aggressive are the players who who uh, end up having the most success. Pink's doing a very weird play up here. Um, and this is actually a pocket down through here, right? The Japan area is a pocket off of this territory, off of northern Japan here. Pink started with five. Yellow starts with six. I Part of the reason I wanted blue out of here and the reason I, I went kind of aggressive for this bonus is because I wanted to make sure I had... Yeah, in case blue had a bonus, it appears he does not. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, Fergus is, he's really having a good time here, huh? Blue does put some troops on cap this time. That's thats good to see. Uh, but I'm going to start try to check out Purple's cap. I don't think it's going to be any stronger than three or four troops, if I'm being honest. I, I really don't. And if we start with, well, we got 15 plus a four, or five. We're starting with 12 troops. And blue is flagged, so that's actually good for my protection in here. Uh, we're going to go into purple. I'm going to go into purple. I'm going to see if I can't take their cap. Oh, and purple flagged at the exact same time. The moment they saw me going into them, they flagged immediately. I actually got pretty bad dice on that roll, too, on that two. Um, but I'm going to take their capital to generate better. Red has their bonus as well. Yeah, I lost two on purple. Oh, it was a three. When was that a? Th oh, the cap. No, the cap was a three. I lost two. I lost three on the two and two on the three. So it's a, it's a wash. It's fine. We got double seven capitals, and this way we protect our Australia bonus essentially because if somebody comes in here, they have to skirt by me. Now purple is worth one card. I'm not going to go overly aggressive for this bonus, um, but at this point, I think it makes a lot of sense for me to. Uh, to at least take my Southern Africa bonus. So the difference between this game and the games that are the game that I played earlier is nobody actually flagged in the game that I played earlier. Everybody, all six players or five players, I guess, were actually eliminated. And I had neutral bots on. One guy did bot, but that was after he sacked his stack into my uh, my capital. <laughs> Um, we'll see if I end up, uh, uploading that in the future. It there, I might make like a, a highlight video of the highlights of that game and, and upload it because again, two and a half hours or two hours and 15 minutes. Uh, there's a lot of, of lull that happened at certain points, but there was a, certainly some funny moments and, and interesting moments that happened. So that might see the channel if I'm, uh, starved for backlog, but as it stands right now, I think, 
this is going to be the one that sees the channel. We've managed to at least make the purple player bot. We've got the uh, blue player. I, I Somebody made the blue player bot. I have no idea. Or, or a flag. They both flagged immediately, right? They both just quit outright. They didn't let their time turn timer run out. And the sly little uh, moves that people try to do. Now, yellow does not have a bonus. I wonder if yellow tried to take one and red broke him. Because red's cap size is actually reduced. I might be able to make a heavy impact, impact, impact play on red's cap right now. I think red is the best player in this game besides myself. I don't really have a read on yellow, though. Um, but I, I think it would be in my best interest to play off of my position up here <clears throat> and get red out of the game now. I don't think pink is very good, and it looks like yellow is flagging. So this is why this map, it, it can really, it's a twofold approach, right? I had a very long game that I didn't end up winning uh, in my first attempt at this, and now we've got what is trending to be a pretty quick game, and and the reason behind that, and I'll try to give some insight into both avenues, right? Uh, if you have the first game I attempted, because uh, I'm trying to get you guys to want to play this map, right? If you if you take some of the tips away that uh, that I use when I play the game of Risk, um, that's essentially what I'm going for here. Uh, it, it takes some tips away when I, the way I play the game of risk, which is essentially do what you can to read the board the best way you can and to try to win. And now we're in a one V one with the pink player and we should just be able to snowball this one because red, I took red's cap immediately, immediately flagged. Um, so read your opponents. If people aren't defending your capitals, go for it. But there's, there's always this map I find is it has two avenues that play out. It is one where the inexperienced players are the ones who get the bonuses early and they prevent the experienced players from getting the bonuses. And then those experienced players will remember that and they strike back and the game takes forever because the experienced player at the end of the day is going to play for the trades. Um, this one is, I, I'm trying to, because trust me, this video is going to be so incredibly short that I'm trying to turn this into a learning experience for all of you uh, while we clear out presumably the pink and yellow bots from this game. Um, I'm, I'm doing my best to make it educational for everybody. So that's the one thing that happens. And if you guys as viewers become experienced players, which I fully believe many of you already are and many of you can be with the tips that myself and other creators provide because we've already won the game on turn four because both of these other two players botted it's all about like see the positions that you can take on the very first turn which uh which was like i realized i could take australia and if you're able to do that without aggravating anybody that's generally the best way to play it so now we're just going to take as much board as we can uh because of of the botted players uh to try i'm just going to try to win this as fast as possible um, but this way, I don't anticipate anybody really coming back here. So I'm just going to take all of these bonuses. Yellow is right there. Like yellow could come back, I suppose, but I'm not, uh, I'm not tremendously worried about it. We'll just try to run the board as fast as I can. Uh, generating these troops. But essentially, so that's that's the one avenue. The other avenue is somebody like myself who knows what they're doing, takes the bonuses, plays for what they need to play for, etc. Yeah, pink is spotted. Okay. And and you win that way where, you know, I took this bonus. I realize I always got to watch for stuff, right? You count the number of attacks opponents are doing on early turns because at the end of the day, that's that's really going to be how you win the game is is paying attention to the maneuvers that the opponents are making and doing your best to uh to to find opportunity oh come on come on come on come on come on ah darn find opportunity that to, to to set yourself up for a successful game so like i noticed purple was taking way too much of their bonus they didn't own enough of it uh from the start Let's go. Boom, 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 boom. Oops. All right. Uh, so I'm, I'm trying to just, just run the board. The bots both get uh, 10 minutes to come back. So 
That's the idea here. But essentially, I saw purple attack so much, and then I saw you can see the dice down at the bottom. If it's only rolling, if the player's only rolling two dice, that likely means they've run out of their entire stack. And we saw his cap was a three because he pulled off the material from the Falklands here that he attacked with. And so even if you start with 14, like, Purple didn't own really any of these territories, which is uh, certainly telling. Let's see. Oh, I have a trade-in. We get extra troops. First trade-in of the game. Uh, let's go off of this, see what else I can take out. I kind of want to leave the caps to last, but I want to make sure I eliminate ye uh, yellow first, because yellow technically bought it out before, uh, before the pink player, so... Oh, we killed purple. That was an accidental. Um, the placements, if a player is bought it, it will continue counting for placement. If they are, uh, oh, there's blue. If they are flagged, they place wherever their flag went. So, did yellow have this bonus? And All right, let's stop there. Uh, let's hit more red. I'll just take as many territories as I can. Um, and this should be all wrapped up. A nice uh, sub-20-minute game of Earth 2209 AD. Uh, I... It, th that's the contrast, right? It's the set that happens on this map is either either it's the best or the or, or the longest game you've ever played, but it's a lot of fun. There's a tons of card uh, card blocking opportunities. Not every game is going to be a beat down like this one. Uh, and the players in our game, we did have Evic one two three from New Zealand, the yellow player Open Ranger three two zero two from Hungary, the blue player General Shields from the United States, the red player General Heroic from Canada, and the purple player General Epsilon from Canada as well. This should be enough troops to uh, just clean the board up, and we'll get to find out where Pink's cap is. I actually, again, I'm trying to use this because it's such a short video as a learning experience for everybody. Red had a good idea defending your bonus, but red did not put enough troops on capital. Yellow, I believe, actually managed to um, to hold their bonus. They did. I don't actually know why yellow bought it out. They held their bonus. They didn't even get broken by red uh, before my, my stuff. But I, just evaluating the capital choices here, I saw what I thought was a better Libya capital for blue. would have been better defended. They ended up playing for a bonus on the other side of the board. Um, I might get down to pink's cap and then not roll it right away. Yeah, let's not roll this. I want to take a turn just to talk through what else is here. We'll roll it on the next turn. Uh, pink's cap, very, very bad. This is a card blockable cap and a split bonus. So you see, uh, this bonus is split down this way into Indonesia. So he'd have to loop all the way around through North and South America to come break that. We've got, um... And then it's a two-point card block from Xinjiang and Pakistan with no bonus held. I like Red's cap a lot, actually. It it sees out into a, a bonus that he isn't capped within. So usually we'd have attacks off of that. I don't hate Yellow's cap, actually. This attacks only down onto one spot. It is a two-point guard or three-point guard from the other side. And then with my cap, uh, three-point guard on this side. But... So within a bonus, it has good attacking opportunities. Blue's cap wasn't bad, but I think this one is for the same reasons that red is. Gives attacking opportunities off. Purple's cap I don't think is very good. That is a, uh, at some point here, a one, two, three point card block. Uh, kind of buried within a bonus that they came off of to to not do enough. My cap, uh, if I didn't lock it, would have been had a lot of outward opportunity. Two point holds a, a bonus that I was able to take on the first turn. So, uh, those are kind of how I feel about those cap choices, just in case you guys are wondering. And that is a sub-20 minute game of Europe 2209, or sorry, Earth 2209 AD. Hit that like button down below if you guys enjoyed. Subscribe if you haven't already. I give shoutouts to new subscribers as long as you have public subscriptions on. Let's take a look at the ranks of the players. Uh, novice, novices, uh, all around. Um, not surprised with the uh, sheer amount of botting out, but I... Uh, as always, everybody, I hope you enjoyed. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you have a tremendous rest of your day. From myself and Fergus, peace.